Hey everyone, welcome to your ninth um, Java game development tutorial. Uh, today we are going to create a class to handle input for our game. As you can uh, I probably imagine, that's very important, or else it's not a game, it's a movie. So, uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. First thing we're going to do is in... I'm going to go ahead and create a new package. I know I want to create a lot of packages because that's I like to keep everything very organized. I'm going to call this one org.input. And inside of it, I'm going to say, um, let's just call this class input. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to say, let's see, public class input implements key listener. That's the only one we need right now. I'm going to go ahead and import key listener and add unimplemented methods. As you can see, the methods that we need are key pressed, key released, and key typed. And all of those take a key event as a parameter. I'm going to go ahead and clean up this code a bit. Okay. I, I like to name my event parameters E just for simplicity. Now the way we're going to handle input for our game is we're going to create a private static boolean array. For right now put uh, 128 booleans in it um, and we'll call it uh, current keys and that is equal to a new boolean array of 128. Uh, wait a second. My, my syntax here is probably not excellent. What am I doing wrong? Oh. You can't set the boolean array uh, size right here where you declare the type. You say it's a boolean array. Current keys equals, and then you, you say new boolean array and you can set the size. I don't use built-in arrays much. I usually prefer array lists, but for our purposes here, a boolean array is just fine. Now what we want to do is when our key is pressed, a key event is uh, passed to this, and one of the things in that key event is the uh, key code, which is a unique integer for every key. Each key has its own unique integer. Um, what we want to do is um, we'll use that unique integer to get a unique one of these booleans right here and we'll set it to be true when we press the key and false when we release the key so what happens is when the key is pressed we say uh, current keys now which current key well the one that corresponds to the key code so we say e dot get key code and we set that particular boolean to true now we can copy this and put it in released uh, in the key release method and set it to false. So it'll become true when we press the key and false when we release the key. It'll be true as long as we're holding the key down. Now let's go ahead and create a static method. Public static boolean uh, get key. And we'll take an integer uh, and we'll call it key code. And what we want to do is we want to return the state of one of the booleans, the boolean that corresponds to the key code we passed. We'd say current uh, keys dot. Oh, I'm sorry, not current. Uh, not dot. Current keys key code. So it'll return the state of whichever key was pressed. Now to implement this uh, input class, we need to uh, add this as a key listener to our game's canvas object. So back here where we created the canvas, um, let's go to the end right before we say start rendering, we're going to say canvas dot add key listener. It's expecting a key listener and our input class happens to be a key listener or at least it implements it. So we say new input. I'm going to go ahead and import it and we get multiple things here. Uh, obviously we want org.input.input .input, because that's our input class. Now we do that. Now how can we test this out? Well the easiest way to test it um, for right now, let's go to that test sprite that we created 
back here in our update class, instead of having um, our little movement code, uh, sorry, not, not update class, update method. Uh, my terminology is not good today. Okay. In our update method, we're going to go ahead and say if, and this will show you how we're going to get input for our game in general. Input the class, um, that is, because this is a static thing. Input dot get key, and let's say key event dot um, w. Uh, no, that's not right. Key event dot, oh, sorry, vk w. Um, that is a key code, is it not? Let me see. vk w. It is an integer. Okay, so I think that's correct. So we say, um, if we're pressing the key w on the keyboard, then let's say pose y minus equals 10 times delta time. Actually, let's make this uh, 80 times delta time. Now, pose y, um, our coordinate system on our screen is going to be um, positive x moves us to the right, negative x moves us left, positive y moves us down, and negative y moves us up. So when we press w, we want to move upwards at 80 pixels per second. Let's see if it works. If I've done everything properly. Pressing W. Yep, look at that. We move upwards. And it stopped working. It is no longer working. Uh, we have an error. Okay, um... The error we're getting is... Why is that? No, that error was whenever we quit. Um, the error we're getting right here whenever uh, I pressed um, command Q to quit the game. Uh, command is key 157, um, and our Boolean array only goes up to 128. Um, that's not too much of a problem. I'm just going to go ahead and set this to be like 196, arbitrary, arbitrary value there. Uh, I haven't had any problems with anything above 196, though, so... Yeah, and our character moves like he's supposed to. Pretty cool, huh? Um, let's go ahead and add a couple more uh, input things here. If input dot get key key event dot vks, then we want to do the same thing except in reverse. We want to move down instead of up, so we just change this minus to a plus. Now I'm going to copy and paste both of those. I'll tell you what changes I make. Vk a pose x minus equals 80 and vk d pose x plus equals 80. Okay, now we should be able to move around the screen with ease using our w, a, s, and d keys. And that's the basis of input for our game. You can see that's pretty sweet right there. Um, so, if you like this episode, please comment, uh, like, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.